If you have your Bibles, please turn to James. Right after Hebrews, right before First Peter. James chapter 2. And I'm going to read verse 13. James chapter 2. I'm going to read 13. It says, there, is, there will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. But if you have been merciful, God will be merciful when He judges you. And I've heard from a pretty good source that He delights in showing mercy and that mercy triumphs over judgment. Get that? Anybody ever uh, drive a car on a road? Get more and more specific. In Pennsylvania? <laughs> Lately? Alright, there is opportunity there for mercy, I'm sure. Because here's what we want. We want justice. Right? It's my turn to pull out. And some bleep expletive pulls out in front of me. I want judgment. I want satisfaction. I want that person to get pulled over by the police. I want him to wreck. I want him to be a flat tire. Pray the judgment. I pray the fire of God fall on that person who cut me off. Right? That's not very merciful. You know when we really want mercy? When we're the jerk who pulls out in front of somebody. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, sometimes I'm that jerk. And I, I just did it this week. I was thinking, my brain was a million miles away, and I came to the stop sign, and I wasn't looking to my left or my right, and I started to pull. I just started to pull out. And the horn, and the, the dirty looks, and the peace sign. But it wasn't a peace sign. It was broken somehow. <laughs> anyway, I'll just let that go. I was the jerk. And the last thing I wanted when I was the jerk was justice. What I really wanted was some mercy. And, if, and like, oh, come on. Like, you've never done it. <laughs> you know? We've all done it. We've all been the jerk. Right? And thank God somebody showed us some mercy. Mercy is a good idea. And, and I'm finding a pattern throughout the Bible where God himself is the author of mercy. And I found a really cool, short, sweet definition of the word mercy. You guys want to hear it? Yes. Not giving someone what they deserve. That is mercy. If you need a punch in the nose and I don't give it to you, that's mercy. You know, if, if God could press a button, push a button, and the trap door opens up, and I go, ah, down to the bowels of the earth, and he doesn't do it, that's mercy. Right? Not giving someone what they do deserve. Right? We really need to think about this word as we read, as we progress further. I'm not talking about somebody else today. I'm talking about you. All you who are sitting here, all of you watching on Facebook, hello, I'm Tom, how are you? Uh, anyone who, who has an ear to hear, we all could use a lesson in mercy. But Tom, you don't understand what this person said. Tom, you don't understand what this person did. It was wrong. And the law says, you do this and you get this. True. And I believe, with all my heart, being a student of the Bible, that judgment will come one day. But it, it isn't yet. It's coming. Right will be made. Wrong will be done away with. And God himself will do it. He will exact judgment on planet Earth and on every soul that ever breathed a breath. They will get their just desserts. I will get my just desserts. But in my personal life, God has shown me mercy. And I have reached back up to heaven and said, thank you. God even did me one better. He gave me grace through Jesus Christ. Now, grace is a totally different word. It's a different message. I don't want to get into it too deep. Whereas mercy is not giving you what you do deserve. Grace is giving you something that you do not, under any circumstances, deserve. You see, one is not giving, and one is giving. So grace is mightier. 
and grace, learning how to live in grace and receive grace, that's another sermon. Today, I just want to talk to you about mercy. Don't call the fire of God down on everyone who persecutes you or who wrongs you or if someone has a different political opinion or a different religious view. You know, be careful fall, calling down the fire of God on that person. Show mercy. Because every enlight, enlightened person has this going for them. They once were blind, but now they see. People who are in their blindness need a little bit of mercy. The same way you needed mercy. Let me read you in the Old Testament the classic first time that I really, really can see God's mercy. I'm going way back to the book of Genesis here. Genesis 4. I'm going to read you a story. Do you like stories? Yes. Thank you. One person likes stories. The rest of you just bear with Eric because he's going to enjoy this. <clears throat> this is Genesis chapter 4. I'm just going to start with uh, verse 1. And I'll glaze over the naughty parts because Keith's here today. I don't want to upset him. Now, Adam knew his wife. Okay, and I won't explain that. Uh, I think fifth grade biology class, they teach that now, but I'll, I'll, I'll skip over it. He knew his wife Eve, and she became pregnant. When she gave birth to Cain, she says, with the Lord's help, I have produced a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother and named him Abel. When they grew up, Abel became a shepherd, while Cain cultivated the ground. When it was time for harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. Abel also brought a gift, the best of the firstborn lambs from his flock. The Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. This made Cain very angry. And he looked dejected. Why are you so angry, the Lord asked Cain. Why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door. It's eager to control you, but you must subdue it and be its master. So one day Cain suggested to his brother, hey, let's go out into the field, you know, have a little chit-chat, you know. Harmless enough, right? And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Are there any brothers in the audience today? This is not giving you any ideas, I hope. This is what you don't do. Afterwards, the Lord asked Cain, where is your brother? Where is Abel? Now, the King James really lays this one out nice. Am I my brother's keeper? Ever heard that before? That's from the lips of the first murderer. But the Lord says, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are cursed. Here's the judgment. You ready? This is God's judgment. You are cursed and banished from the ground which has swallowed your brother's blood. No longer will the ground yield good crops to you, no matter how hard you work. That is a harsh judgment from the lips of God. Right? From now on, you will be a homeless wanderer on the planet Earth. Pretty harsh, huh? Cain replied to the Lord, now, this is the first murderer, by the way. He's praying to the Lord now. My punishment is too great for me to bear. You have banished me from the land and from your presence. You have made me a homeless wanderer. Anyone who finds me will kill me. So the Lord replied, No. For I will give, you, give a sevenfold punishment to anyone who kills you. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain to warn anyone who might try to kill him. So Cain left the Lord's presence and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Now, as we know, Cain went on to found a civilization. So the harsh judgment that was placed on him was, he was given mercy. Now, that mark of Cain that we hear so much about was actually an act of mercy. Hey, this guy is worthy of death. He's a real criminal. 
But I put my mark on him. Do not touch him. That is God's mercy. Now I want you to think about this story. Mankind in paradise, taken from the blessed ground that the Lord God had created, that fashioned, formed, the Spirit of God breathed into him. Do anything you want, guys, except this one thing. And they did the one thing. So now these people are cast out of the beautiful garden, and they have to work for a living. That's not a blessing sometimes, is it? That's a curse, having to work for a living. It used to be you could just walk around and pick fruit all day and name animals. That was a pretty good gig. That's all gone now. <clears throat> so they have a child. They're fallen creatures, and they have a child. And they name him Cain because they've received a man-child from the Lord. But the earth is cursed. The ground is cursed. Human nature has fallen. And now this firstborn child is born bent and flawed with a great capacity for evil. And that, unfortunately, my friends, in all reality, has been passed down to every single one of us. We all, in our hearts, have this potential to do great evil. I talked to some people who lived in East Germany during the Nazi regime. They, they were, you know, little kids at the time, but now as adults, they're looking back on it. And they were, from their perspective, hey, Hitler was a great guy. He got rid of all the riffraff, man. He put us all to work. It was awesome. He took all the bad people, and he took them out to a camp and, and got them out of our sight so we could live peaceful, happy lives. When, when the Allies won that victory in World War II, they made the people go and parade through and see what happened to how many, how many million Jews? Was there six million Jews? And, and, and gypsies and, and other people taken out of civilization and terrible, terrible atrocities were done to them by men and women who thought they were doing good by doing these atrocities. And most of these soldiers and people who were doing this stuff were just, were just folks like us. And it's just, it just it's so disturbing how a human being could stoop to such horrendous things. And what the Bible tells us is that we, in our souls, are corrupt. We are capable of all kinds of evil. That evil, when we see it, and when we hear about it, we want to punish it. We want to cut it off. And you've heard the story of Corey Ten Boom. I've, I've told you this here before. I'll tell you it real quick. And for my friends on Facebook... She and her sister and her whole family actually were taken to a concentration camp and were tortured, and her sister was actually killed. And the guard who was playing a part in killing his sister came to one of her meetings, her Christian meetings, later, after the war. And he walked up to her and says, Is it true what you say about forgiveness? And she recognized that guy, and something inside her trembled. And something inside her got sick. This is the guy who brought such pain and heartache to my family and killed my sister. And she found the grace and she found the mercy to throw her arms around that man and say, Sir, I forgive you in Jesus' name. That's huge, guys. That is not natural. But that's the heart of God. Because he's, he's written this. It's actually in Micah. 718, if you don't believe me. If you don't believe the song that Mackenzie sang, if you don't believe that, believe Micah 718. It says, God delights in showing mercy. I don't know if you guys delight in showing mercy, whether you show mercy through clenched teeth. All right, I'll let you off the hook this time. I'll let it go. I'll forgive you in Jesus' name. Just don't do it again. But God does it with a full heart. God grants pardon. We're all very, very familiar with John 3.16. But in it's John 3.17 where Jesus says, the Son of Man did not come to judge the world, but to show mercy, to show grace, but to save it. Right? Now he is coming again. And this time not on a donkey, this time on a white horse. And he will exact judgment. But for now, we are under grace. We are under mercy. Now, when you look around the world today, you'll see pain 
You'll see suffering. You'll see injustice. And you'll say, how could God? How could God? But you know what the problem is? You know what the problem has always been? Us. We, guys, human beings are the plague of planet Earth. It's our fault that people go hungry. It's our part that people are killed and murdered and violated and abused. Us. We do it. God is not at fault. If God has a fault, it's this. He's showing mercy to sinful human beings. Of whom I am one. And whom, of whom you are. Now Cain, he deserved a lot worse than what he got. I think even he would admit it. But he asked God for mercy. And you know what? He got it. All through the Bible, I see people who, who do, do terrible, evil things. And God just shows mercy to them. I think of David. What a great guy. The songwriter, the prophet, the king. I mean, every standard of every king who ever lives, I mean, David is the gold standard. I mean, he's the one who killed Goliath. He was the guy with the heart after God. Right? Well, in 2 Samuel, we're told, one day, while his troops were at battle, he was goofing off. He was not where he was supposed to be. And he took a walk, a walk. I almost said on the wild side. Erase that from the tape. I didn't mean that. He took a walk and he was looking at some lady taking a bath on a rooftop. Now why do ladies take baths on rooftops? I'll never understand that. Maybe because they figure there's no guys up there looking at them. Well, this lady was wrong that day. When he sees her, that's one thing. Oh my gosh, look, woman's taking a bath. Walk this way. He didn't walk away. He stayed there. He stared. And he desired her. And he being the king, he sent for her. And, she, and, and he, he got her pregnant. And then he had the lady's husband killed. I mean, does that sound like a good guy to you? Does that sound like a guy who, who, whose heart is after God to you? What would you have done to a person like that? You know, what if Uriah, uh, Be Bathsheba? Thank you. <laughs> what, what if that was your brother-in-law? What if that was your, your brother? Wouldn't you be mad at David? Wouldn't you want justice? Wouldn't you pray to God, hey, strike that guy down? What he did to him, that was so wrong. He's a murderer. He's an adulterer. He's a liar. He's a cheat. I don't care if you wrote half the book of Psalms. And so Nathan the prophet comes to his house with the word of God. He goes, David, I got a story for you. There was a guy, he was a poor man. He didn't have too much, but he had a little lamb. And he, 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 he treated that lamb like it was part of his family. That, that lamb could actually come in and have dinner with them at their table. It was like his little pet. And there was a rich guy down the road who had lots of lambs. But he came and he stole the lamb off this poor guy and he killed it. And David got mad. You know, David used to be a shepherd. David has a soft spot for the sheep. He goes, who is this guy? I'll have him drawn and quartered. I'll, have, I'll take his head. David was ready to exact judgment on whoever this guy was. And Nathan, the prophet, the man of God, with the word of God, pointed at King David and said, Thou art the man. You took what didn't belong to you when you had it your own. You took somebody else's and you committed murder in the sight of God. He knows it, you know it, and everybody knows it. You're busted. King David. So, should God have thrown a bolt of lightning and killed him right there on the spot? And, and judged him? Who would have blamed God for that, right? But God chose to show him mercy. And because of that, David went on. And from this relationship that, that started off in sin, God showed such mercy that one of their sons, Solomon, became the next king of all Israel. Is that not grace? Is that not mercy? I'm saying all this not to let sinners off the hook at all. No, sin, sin is wrong. Sin destroys you, it destroys everyone who loves you, and it breaks your relationship with God. God hates sin because it destroys the human soul. Lots of things we do and think are good ideas are destroying our souls. And God hates that thing. But He loves you. And He'll show you mercy in the midst of that. So I'm not letting sinners off the hook. You need to deal with your sin. You need to repent of your sin. 
Because like I said before, we're the problem, guys. He's the solution. He's not our enemy. Well, there will come a day when the eastern skies are going to split. And he will come back on a white horse. And there's going to be people dwelling on the earth on that day who are going to say, oh, rocks fall on us. Hide us from him. Because here comes judgment. Here comes justice. Could we have just a little bit more mercy? But on that day, it will be too late. God forbid it be one of us or one of our loved ones or anybody out there on Facebook watching. God forbid it. Today is the day of God's mercy. Today is the day to take advantage of His grace and His goodness. With that loving hand that He extends to us, saying, Child, I forgive you. Will you come? <coughs> Will you take my name? Will you take my hand? Will you be my child? Will you forsake your sins? Will you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus who died for your sins? Will you do that? That is the question asked in the day which we live today. Now we as Christians, our job is to show mercy. Not to be a part of sin anymore. Not to just say, oh, it's no big deal. But to show, hey, he, had, he showed mercy on me. To be a light. To be a forgiven person. Who could, who could shine in this dark world and say, hey, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. That's our job, to shine for these poor people who are blind, not to judge them. You know, not to say, you shouldn't smoke, you shouldn't chew, you shouldn't go with girls to do. You know, that's, <laughs> you really should. But anyway, that's not our job. So I want you to think about mercy today. Next time you're in traffic, this is going to be a test. I want you to hear my voice. Sometimes I'm the jerk. Sometimes I pull out in front of somebody else. I've done it. I forgive that person. I'm not going to make big, big deal. I'm not going to make a big deal of it. I'm not going to give them the broken peace sign. I'm not going to give them a piece of my mind. I'm not going to try to straighten them out. I'm going to let it go and say, you know what? No harm, no foul. Let's let us just move on. Can you do that? If you can do it in traffic, that's a good start. Then try it in your home, with your loved ones, with your brothers and sisters. Don't be taking your brothers out in the field and doing a Cain and Abel thing, okay? Don't do that. I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to you. Because that didn't work out so well for Cain. 